How many of you in this room, how many of you people in this room right now know somebody who should change their life, they know they should change their life, they even know how they could change their life, but they still don't do it. How many of you know somebody like this maybe intimately? Optimists succeed at a four to five fold, depending upon the task. He's an American businessman, author, and philanthropist. He served as an advisor for leaders around the world for over 40 years. He's one of my favorite mentors. He's Tony Robbins. And here are some great teachings from a younger Tony. And if you guys see something to resonate with you, please leave me a comment below so other people can be inspired as well. Also, as you write it down, it's much more likely to stick it in your head too. So enjoy. My definition of success changed through the years to doing what I want, when I want, where I want, with whomever I want, as much as I want, in a way that hopefully also benefits other people simultaneously. That to me is ultimate freedom, that's success. How many of you are willing to play with that as the definition, at least for this weekend, say I? I was opposed, motion's carried. Now, that was my idea of success, and I'd had that in my life, and I wanted it again. So I thought, okay, what I need to learn is what is, there are all these things you can do. There's this and this and this, all these different elements you can study. I want to know one thing. What's the one thing, if you just work on that, everything else will fall into place? What is the number one key to all success? That's all I want to know. So I went around, and I started studying it. I started picking up books, and have you ever done this? Have you ever asked yourself a question, picked up a book, opened the right, maybe the middle of the book, and there's the exact answer you were looking for? How many have had an experience like that? So here I am, and sure enough, I'm reading through this book, and I open it up, whammo, it says the number one key to all success is. Almost the very way I'd language it in my head. So I thought, sure enough, here it is, goal setting. I figured, that's true. Because if you don't have a goal, you have no reason to use your skill or ability. I heard that old phrase that said, well, a man without a goal is like a ship without a rudder. They both end up on the rocks. Kind of corny, but true. I thought, that is it. The number one key to success is goal setting. Of course, I'm a good student, so I always read another book. The second book says, forget goal setting. Goal setting is nice, but that is not it. You can set goal to your blue, goals to your blue in the face. What you've got to learn to do in your life is manage your time. Because you can have great goals, but if you don't manage your time, time is the only resource you can control. It is your life. I thought, that's true. The number one key to all success, time management. Of course, then I read a third book. It said, forget time management, forget goals. The whole key to it all is discipline. You can play with your time management all day long, but if you can't discipline yourself, you've got nothing. I thought, that's true, it's discipline. Until I read the fourth book, which says, forget discipline, forget time, and forget all this stuff, it's all belief. Because if you're disciplined, but you don't believe it's gonna work, it won't. Or even if it does, you won't see it working. Now, by the way, which one of these is truly the number one foundational key to all success? That's right, they all are. In fact, the list doesn't end here, does it? So that got me frustrated. I thought, God, how do you work on all these things simultaneously? I want to know the one thing that if you worked on this alone, everything else would fall into place. And I searched and I searched and I interviewed people until one day I came across the number one key to all success in life. If you're interested, you might want to write this down. Only if you're interested in the number one key to all success in life. If not, don't bother to jot it down. The answer I came up with, the number one key to all success is knowledge. Knowledge. I said, certainly people who succeed, they know things that other people just don't know. That's why they're so much more successful. I thought, knowledge is it. And as soon as I wrote down knowledge in my notes, I crossed it out because that's definitely not it. How could you even write that down? Come on. You gotta know better than that. See, if it was knowledge and everybody who's educated would be successful, and you know that's not true, right? How many of you in this room, how many of you people in this room right now know somebody who should change their life, they know they should change their life, they even know how they could change their life, but they still don't do it? How many of you know somebody like this maybe intimately? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So knowledge by itself is not enough. See, knowing is great, but it's not enough. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is information. Power is something else. And what I think is the really number one key to all success is something I call personal power. This is really it, jot it down. <laughs> personal power. That to me is the single number one foundational key to all success. If you use it, you can get everything else that you want. Personal power means the ability to take action, to follow through, 
to take the steps that are necessary to take an idea and translate it into reality. And it's the number one tool that most people in life never exercise, and it's the gift that every one of us has right now and at any moment in our life. Even if you haven't used this gift for 20 years right now by one decision, you could start using your power. You could start following through. You could take this idea in your head and turn it into physical reality. Whether that idea is how you want to make your relationship or how you want to influence your children or the kind of money you want to make or a business you want to start, it doesn't matter. It is available right now. If all you do is decide and then follow through. Now you go, but Tony, what if I do all that stuff and it doesn't work? <laughs> Guess what? You'll learn something. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a little surprise for you. There's a bonus, so stay tuned until the end so you can watch the bonus clip that I have for you. Um, please share with me in the comments below what it is that you learned from this video and Tony and what it is that you're going to apply in your life. So enjoy the bonus and we'll see you on the next video. The more you can cultivate that sense of wealth, that sense of abundance in you, the more you can feel that sense of joy, the more easy it's going to be for you to do financially. Because you're not going to be in this scarce, fearful mode. Now, that's not enough by itself. You can have this great sense of abundance and do the wrong mechanics and be a disaster. True or false? But if I had a, they have an area to get you started with, you want to have the emotion and psychological strength because that's going to carry you through when the mechanics are boring or frustrating or when things aren't working out. Your emotion, your psychology is what will carry you. It'll get you to keep doing it. Everyone knows, if you've done any studies, Dr. Seligman is very famous for doing studies on optimism. And in those studies, you know what he found out? People that are pessimists are much more realistic. They're much more accurate. If you give them a test and you ask them to look at something and give you a size measurement of it or to evaluate their own success or failure in a task, and every study Seligman's done, he did it in the University of, I think, Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly, originally, what he found was that optimists always see themselves as doing better than they really did. They basically BS themselves. What happens to pessimists, they're 10 times more accurate. But here's what he found out. What he found out is because the people who are accurate never push themselves because they know it's never going to work anyway, whereas the optimist sees it better than it is, so they keep doing it. Because they have the illusion they did well, well, I'll do even better next time. And because of that optimism, they did it more often, and so optimists succeed at a four to five fold, depending upon the task, result ultimately beyond anything that a pessimist will do, and they're not as accurate. All that's a big way of saying is, if you can develop a psychology of resilience in yourself, you don't have to be optimistic or fake, you can be real. The realness is, whatever shows up, you are larger than anything that can happen to you. You are larger than any financial challenge you could ever face. Show them what it really means to live like golden. Yeah, we'll go.